Oh no, that's cool. That'll work. Do you want to start? Yeah. All right. Okay. It's recording. Right. Yay. Okay. Okay. All three, right. two, one. Yep. Three, two, one. Hey. Hello. Happy. Hi. On- it's still October. <laughs> I was gonna say happy uh, October, but last last podcast it was October. Oh. Well, I guess it's it's happy like a little bit nearer to Halloween. Yeah. Happy almost Halloween. Happy almost spooktober Halloween. You know what? Halloween is really not a big deal in England. It really makes me sad. Really? It's huge no, over here really. in America. Do they not play a bunch of Halloween movies like every day in England around Halloween? Not really, no. It's, I mean, on Halloween night stuff happens, but it's not like a build-up or anything like that. Whereas over there, I gather it's like as big as Christmas. Spooky, scary skeletons. That's my my notification sound on my phone. I Halloween on my phone. That was lovely. I really, really like that. So every time I get a text, spooky, scary skeletons, (laughs) it makes me laugh every time. (laughs) I really like that. And it's awesome. I am. Um, I really, really like Halloween though. On Halloween night, one thing that I really wanted to go to, but I'm not out because of money, is at the Prince Charles Cinema. They're doing a Halloween all night, uh, starting from midnight, and it's going to be like, what the fuck is it going to be? It's going to be like, right? These are the movies: Halloween, uh-huh. The Exorcist, Nightmare on Elm Street, um, The Shining. And oh shit, what's the other one? There's one more, but that's a good fucking lineup, and it's gonna take you like the right Friday from... the Thirteenth or something. And no, better than that's that. That's the only one that's missing in that because you have Nightmare, you have a uh, Halloween, and you're just missing Friday the Thirteenth. <laughs> you know what? I don't think Friday the Thirteenth is all that though. Yeah, I don't think it's that great of a movie. It's. I, a, I, I, I mean, out of those three, Nightmare is my favorite. I love the Nightmare on Elm Street movies. I do. I mean, I even love the shitty ones. Have you seen the sequel? Oh, yeah, me too. Yeah. I've seen... I have all of them. Yeah, I I don't have all of them, but I've seen all of them. The first sequel is the gayest fucking thing. It's like literally literally homosexual? Like homoerotic? Yeah, it's incredibly... It's probably what I should have said, homoerotic. Um, It's incredibly homoerotic. And the guy who made it has no idea what people are talking about when they say that. Uh Uh-huh. Like, seriously, like, you've seen it, right? Um, I don't remember it. There, Do you, I've, se- I've seen all of them, but I don't remember them very clearly, except for the first one, which I've seen a lot. Um, Do you remember Do you remember anything about how homoerotic the second one is? No, I don't. I can't Rick. even pinpoint which, the, which one the second one is. After a point, they all just start to blend together. That happens to me with, like, movies that are, like, over four movies long, like, movie series. <laughs> like, if you know they're, like, over four movies, they'll all just start to blend together for me at some point. There was this, like, getting to know you thing on my college course, um, and, uh, like, one of the things was we had to ask each other, like, a series of questions, and one of them was, what was your favourite movie? And the majority of people I spoke to didn't have a favourite movie. They couldn't even name, like, a top five. They couldn't remember. Like, I forget that other people aren't big fucking nerds like me how do you not have like like a like at least like five movies that you really like well one girl said like yeah i watch movies all the time but most, i can't most people remember- i know can pinpoint five movies that they really like even if it's not their favorite movies well well I mean, most people I know can pinpoint five movies that they really really enjoy <laughs> you know no, one, one girl one girl was just like what did she say? She was like, yeah, I watch movies all the time, but I can never remember what they're called. That's... <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't watch a movie, honestly. Like, I'm one of those people that does not watch a movie unless I know what the fuck, like, is going on and what it's called. Like, any time I see something my mom's watching on TV, the, my first words out of my mouth are, what is this? <laughs> yeah, yeah, same here. And, like, I... I won't watch anything. Like, I'm quite discerning. I think that's the thing. Like, if you're into movies, you watch good movies, or at the very least, you watch movies that are so bad they're good, and yeah, that have like, re- like, that's, like a reputation. Yeah, like, people ask at the end of every year, what's the worst movie you saw this year, or the worst movie of 20, 
2015 or whatever, and I'm like, I don't go out and pay money to see movies that are that I know are going to be bad. Like, yeah, there are some, there are people that do that for me. There are, there are, there are movie critics online who do that for me, so I don't have to spend my money to go see a movie that a I don't want to see and b I know is going to be bad. So, yeah, exactly. I see things like I I do see things entirely based on whether I want to see them. Like. And that that's the thing, like, that's why I don't understand people that won't watch, like, black and white movies or movies with subtitles or whatever. It's like, what? so you'd rather see a movie that's recent than a movie that's good. I don't get that shit. I don't yeah. get it. Uh, and, yeah, so, like, pe- like I'll get, like, I've gotten asked, like, what's the worst movie you saw this year? And I'm like, I didn't really see any bad movies this year. I mean, unless I, like, purposefully go out of my way to download one or watch one online or yeah, someone I mean, someone pays for me to go see a movie with them and it it's bad like I didn't want to even see it in the first place which has happened to me before uh I like I don't go out of my way to see movies like that usually what will happen with especially me especially like... when they're in theaters because then I'm paying money to go see it yeah, exactly. Unless it's something that has a reputation or I know is going to be so bad it's funny, I don't bother. Like, a bland romantic comedy just has no, like, holds no interest yeah. to me. I'm not, like, I, didn't, I didn't fucking see Pixels, so I can't say that Pixels was the worst movie I ever saw this year. But I didn't see Pixels because I knew it was going to be bad and I didn't want to fucking watch it. <laughs> But you know what? In five years' time or whatever, what might happen is I might be in like a supermarket like a a big you know a big supermarket with like a bargain bin or something and if i'm with a friend and we don't have anything to fucking do and we think like let's watch a really terrible movie for a laugh and there's a movie that costs like two pound fifty that might be the movie we pick up and it might be unintentionally really funny but that's under very different circumstances. I'm not going to sit in a cinema and see a movie that I know I'll hate. Yeah. I only have so much money a year to spend on movies, so that's exactly. why I only see, like, a few. Like, I've seen Mad... I've actually done really well this year. I've seen Mad Max. I've seen Avengers 2. Spy. And I'm I'm missing one, I think. But that's, like... That's pretty good for me because I only have, you know, so much money to spend on these movies. And I'm yeah. not going to spend it on, you know, Pixels or even Fantastic Four. I was going to see it until I heard how terrible it was. So I'm like, oh, I guess I'll skip it and watch it when it comes on DVD just because I want to see how bad it is. Yeah, I d- um, yeah. yeah, again, those are... Uh, I feel like I'm the only person on Earth who has not seen Mad Max Fury Road, by the way. You know what? Mad Max is awesome, Greer. Like, that is a film worth I seeing. I want to watch it's- it! <laughs> It's like, it, it's, I, I couldn't take my eyes off it. I just thought it was so cool. Yeah. I don't know how else to describe it. What do you, what did you think of it, Heather? Uh, not Heather, sorry. <laughs> I just thought, I didn't really have, like, a lot of expectations going into it, because I've never seen the other movies, which I want to see them now. Yeah, but, yeah, me too. Yeah, but I thought it was, like, just a great action movie. It was just a great story. I loved everything about it. I, it just... I felt like the movie never stopped, but I mean that yeah, in like a good way. Because exactly. usually, if when I say that, I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I wish the movie would give me a breather." But it was just always going, but it was just great. Like every action scene just added to the movie. Yeah, you know what? It was doing its own thing, wasn't it? It didn't need to. Because usually, I would say that too. I'd say the movie needs to slow down and just like exist and let us exist with those characters, but it it was following like its own blueprint completely i and i'd never seen anything that looked uh, like it like going off. hold on <laughs> um, i feel weird staring at that dog dressed like a minion oh, i that's... really i really fucking hate the minions i hate them so much <laughs> i love them i i like i haven't seen the movie minions but i've seen the first despicable me movies and i'm like oh, you know what fine I've heard they're kind of cute movies, and I do want to see them. I just hate the prevalence of them in, like, memes and stuff. Oh, yeah. Some of those are just stupid. I think some of them are kind of funny, but the rest of them are just dumb. I I, I think the memes are cute, but I think they're also, like, overshown. Yeah, they are, definitely. I just think, like, 
it wouldn't bother me so much, but some of the memes are quite passive aggressive. Like when they have like I don't know, a picture of a minion looking really cute and then like a little heading or whatever that says like like I'm the girl that always says what everyone else is thinking, like, uh, that can just fuck off. <laughs> yeah, those that. are really obnoxious. It's so obnoxious. It is. I there was a friend that I well, I'm using the friend the term friend loosely. But <laughs> she she used to always fu- show like minion pictures and it was really annoying and I that's not the reason I like stopped like subscribing to her feed and stuff, but I did. But I think that's a really good reason. She, she's a passive aggressive person in general because she's always like on Facebook, my life is so terrible. Don't ask uh, me about it. I don't want to talk about it. And then her mom be like, what's wrong, honey? Are you okay? Mom, yes, shut up. Oh leave me alone. God. And then there'll always be some reply that's like, PM me, hun. Kiss. Like, yeah, fuck that. Like, why didn't you just PM them in the first place? You know? Yeah, like, why- I was- yeah, it's ridiculous. Sorry, I cut you off. <laughs> it's really, really annoying. And, like, when people, like, because usually people like that, usually people that put up, like, I don't know, either those really, really vague statuses that are like, today I learned who my real friends are. Like, you never can tell. I'll be less trusting in future. Like, it's either that yeah. <laughs> or it's that as a meme with a picture of a girl on a beach in black and white. And those people are usually the most untrustworthy, backstabbing people you could hope to meet. So the irony of them doing that just never ceases to amaze me. I'm back. Sorry. Hey. Yeah, we were just bitching about, like, those minion memes. Oh, yeah. There's a whole subreddit for that. For bitching about them? Yeah, our minion hate. Yay! Oh, that's such good news. Minion hate. There we minion go. Minion hate. I only Where hate the we? memes, not the minions. <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I oh, no, totally it's all, agree. Oh, no, it's all about hating on the, on the minions. Yeah. No, I just, hate, I just hate the memes. Um, I'm like only going to go like on the there. Facebook memes and stuff? Yeah. Yeah, yeah well, this entire subreddit is about that. Yeah, yeah, that's what I fucking hate. Like, the movies, I'm sure, are perfectly, like, harmless and probably quite sweet. But are we recording again, by the way? Uh, yeah. Okay. I think yeah. we've been record- I've I've had the recording on this whole time, so. Oh, that's good because we were talking about a lot of really funny shit. Okay. Yeah. So, like, don't edit any of that out. That's all good stuff. Okay. Cool. Um, <sighs> yeah, like I was saying to Caitlin um, Greer, like what I really hate with the minions is when you get like a little cute picture of a minion, and then like the heading will be something like, "I'm that girl that always says what everyone else is thinking," like. That can go to hell. Yeah, that's, you know that's, what I mean? that's what that whole fucking subreddit is about. Yeah, that, that shit can fuck right off. I really hate it. God damn it. The worst thing about Facebook is all that passive-aggressive bullshit. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like, when someone shares, like, a picture of a girl on a beach, and it's in black and white, and it's like, one it's day like, you'll it's learn... It's like, terrible quality. Yeah, yeah, exactly. And it's like really like pseudo philosophical bullshit so it'll be like that picture and then it'll be a heading that's like one day you'll learn who your real friends are Ugh. and then it'll be like marilyn monroe 1975 or something like that and it's like marilyn yeah, monroe yeah, did yeah, not exactly. say that <laughs> yeah exactly exactly no it's just it's such bullshit I have like people like that on my facebook all the time especially uh um people like from work that i know which is yeah Sorry, people from work, uh, but your memes are shit. Yeah, I mean, no, I don't, I I don't mean this to criticize, well, I do a bit. Some of the people that share them are actually perfectly lovely people in real life. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. But not all of them. Some of them are jerks, and that's what's ironic. I don't have jerks on my Facebook. I try not to. Some uh, of my jerks are family members, so I'm like, I don't want to defriend them, but... I wish they would stop posting certain things. Oh. Some people can be jerks and good people, though. <laughs> um, what were we talking about before you got on the phone? Oh. Mad Max. Mad Max, yeah. Mad Max, yeah. No, it looked, it looked amazing. Why is I've my never... phone ringing again? <laughs> ah, stop. Right. It's because you said Mad Max. It, it made the phone ring. Jesus Christ, that's the second time that's happened. Time. You're right. I think Greer needs a secretary. 
<laughs> I would like one too. Yeah, I'd like one. Well, I'd like a secretary that just went into work and college. For me, that'd be really good. That'd be, I want my, I can make my roommate my secretary, but he'll probably yell at me a lot. Like, Caitlin, I'm not your secretary. Stop asking well, me to take calls. You'd have to pay him or her. Yeah, I don't think he'd want <laughs> I don't think he'd accept it. He doesn't really care about money as much as... Well, he cares about money, like bills and stuff, but it, it's like he could never be going to... Headphones. There we go. Hey, buddy. All right, I'm back. Hi. Yeah, right. If I say Mad Max again, is your phone gonna ring? Uh, hopefully not. Okay. Mad Max. Please don't. Mad don't Max. make my X Files ringtone go off. <laughs> well, all I was gonna say looked amazing, really original, played by its own rules. I sound like a right douchebag now. No, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, Mad Max. Great acting also. too. Yeah, fantastic acting. I thought I do Tom love Hardy. Tom, I do love Tom Hardy. He is so handsome. Tom Hardy is a brilliant actor, but you know what? I he doesn't do it for me in the really. Looks. No, he really doesn't. You know, he really, really doesn't. Damn. He's one of the few people. You know, I I, I think. Hot. Just... I do. I I think objectively he's hot, but I don't find find him attractive. I can I can he... see why people don't find him attractive, but I do find him attractive. I think I think he's cute, but he kind of looks like my cousin, so I'm not like attracted. <laughs> oh yeah, that's, that's the same a real with James phone Franco. Color. Damn. <laughs> it's like you I know, can't look, find James tra- Franco attractive because the same cousin that looks like Tom Hardy kind of looks like James Franco, so I can't find you know, either. James Fran Fran doesn't find James Franco attractive because he's James Franco. <laughs> I really, I hate James Franco. We know, Fran. We yeah, know. Yeah, Kate, Caitlin doesn't know. Caitlin doesn't know. No, I'm, we're going to be friends for like, and it'll be like 20 years from now, you're still fucking bitching about James Franco. <laughs> he'll be like a philanthropist. Like, he'll have like saved Africa from like hunger or something, and he'll still be like, man, I hate fucking Franco. <laughs> you know what? I, I won't stop until he does. Until he I stops what? <laughs> until he tell. acting. Until he stops everything. Until he stops it all. You still need to watch This Is the End. Like that's a really great film. I like that movie, but I watched it with two of my roommates once, and they absolutely hated it. And what? I felt really awkward because one of my roommates doesn't like violence apparently, and I warned him that there was violence Ooh. in this, but he didn't listen. And the whole time, like, that's not necessary for this movie. That's so gross. I don't want to watch this. And he kept watching the movie. Kill Joy. Oh, fuck's sake. Oh, what a... I'm sorry if he's your friend, but <laughs> that would really annoy you're, me. You're about to be like, what a douchebag. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no, because my, my, friends, my friends annoy me, so I can't, I can't call anyone a douchebag for stuff like that. But it is just like... I mean, is it like a triggering thing? Did it genuinely bother him, or was it just like he disapproved, or what? I think it genuinely bothered him, because he has a very active imagination, and so when he sees violence, like, he thinks about it after the movie, so he can't really handle it. Wow. That's gotta be... That's gotta be rough. That would be really rough, so that's why he doesn't... That's why he doesn't like scary movies, either. Which I'm You know what, though? I do hate telling someone that something's really funny and then watching it with them and then not laughing. I hate that. Oh, uh, yeah, welcome to my life when I try to show my brother anything. <laughs> <laughs> I took my friend Faith to see Avenue Q and she sat there with, like, honestly, like, stone face. Uh. Like, and she really, like, during the interval, I was like, do you want to go? We can go. It's okay. Like, the tickets weren't that expensive. And she was like, no, Fran, like, let's stay. It's cool. Like, she's American. Um, and I was like, are you sure? And she was like, and then afterwards, I was like, so did you like anything about it? Did you even like the songs? And she was like, I could just t- hear her in the toilet cubicle. Like, no, the songs were really annoying. Like, <laughs> I was Aww. so sad. I, like, I had been, like, raving about fucking Avenue Q for so long. <laughs> to be fair, I get, like, Avenue Q is definitely not for everyone. I can definitely see that, but... 
yeah, no, I I can too. I can totally see it, and I can t- I can see why it wouldn't be for her because she's really really into puppetry, but her puppetry is like beautiful, uh-huh. like really like intricate uh-huh. and delicate, and like um yeah, like Avenue Q is not like that at all. It's not intricate and delicate. So, uh, I-, I talked about this last time. Go on. To Georgia. But... Yeah. Uh... What? what how was I gonna segue into that? Scary movies? I absolutely was. Scary movies. You... Okay. Because last time I talked about The Visit, which is a new M. Night movie... Where? Jesus Christ, this sentence! What? It's so long and convoluted. Is it? Sorry. <laughs> I'm only any, the visit is that new my Shyamalan movie, friend. I think you'd really like it. Yeah, I I don't know. A lot of people have been saying that it's really good, actually. It's and that the it's, best movie he's made in the past twenty years. That's not that's saying what, much, but that's I've heard it's really good, so I want to watch it. Everyone it says good. it generally it genuinely creeped me out. Genuinely scared me. You know what, though? Like, Mark Kermode, who I really, really respect, didn't like it. But I don't always agree with him. And ever since he gave it a really bad review, all I've heard it's like is, like, oh, it's, like, his return to form. Um, and, you know, yeah, it's genuinely scary. I didn't so I see think that gonna... coming. I didn't see it coming this time. I usually see it coming. Wow. Yeah, that's a first. I, saw, um, I didn't see it coming. Me and my mom were like, whoa! <laughs> 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 well, you really, I can... my mom is like well that the one movie he did was good and she likes she likes signs a lot she knows you know it's what? bad but she loves signs you know what i i don't really feel one way or the other about signs i don't think he'd gotten bad at that point but you know i really liked the village i don't even care mm. you mad at me no I haven't seen it. <laughs> I haven't seen The Village or Signs because I just looked at it. I was like, I don't think I'm going to like those movies. Uh, I've seen The Happening. That movie's you know, hard, but it's De- funny. Devil, which was the last movie he made, was a piece of garbage. Yeah, Devil fucking sucked. Was that was the Devil one that was the last that- movie he made, or was it after... He was involved in After Earth. I know yeah, that. After, oh, after no, Earth what? was supposed to be like a piece of shit, but I didn't see it. I think he directed After Earth, didn't yeah, he? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, I, I keep yeah. saying Devil was the last movie he made, but I think it was After Earth. But Devil was a piece of shit. <laughs> Devil you know was what? awful. Devil was awful, and I was so sad it was awful because it was, okay, it was my... a funny awful though. Like it was, I laughed a lot. Yeah, but, but that, I, right. I don't think that was the point was to laugh at it, but it was really funny. <laughs> <laughs> That's true of a lot of M. Night Shyamalan's new movies. But, okay, I was I was so sad about Devil because I'm so scared of lifts. And a movie, a horror movie set in a lift, I was like, this is, this is like, great. Like, this is what I want to see. Like, something that I'm genuinely scared of in real life being scary in a movie. And it just wasn't. The thing about that movie, and I was talking with this about some people at work, the thing about that movie and a few other movies, uh, especially recent horror movies, we're talking about recent horror movies and how none of them are really, like, that good anymore. There are only, like, out of, like, ten horror movies or five horror movies that come out, only one of them will be decent. And, yeah, uh, but I think that's true. There, there are so many of these horror movies that turn out to be bad, but the ideas that they have in them are really good. Like, the like Devil on Paper... Sounds like a really interesting movie. You know? You're right. Like, yeah, you're trapped you're in an right. elevator and, like, with five people are trapped in an elevator and someone is, like, possessed. Like, that's a pretty cool idea. The idea of, uh, The Purge, the movie The Purge, is an awesome idea. But apparently, yeah. uh, they just fucked it up. <laughs> you know what, though? Um, like... I haven't seen The Purge, and I haven't I'm either. gonna... You know, no, you know what? I've seen, like, the last 30 minutes of it. I'm gonna, like, hold out all judgment until I see The Purge, because despite what everyone says, like, it's a good enough idea that I do want to see it and make my yeah. own mind up. So, like, what's, like... That got me thinking, like, what is the worst movie you've seen? But not exactly, like, a really, really bad movie, but it has, like, a plot in it that... Or an idea in it, or a synopsis of it that looks good on paper and would be a good movie if directed or written by someone else. Like, it has a good... Again, like I just described, The Purge, 
good idea, great original plot that sounds interesting, but it just kind of, someone fucked it up. That's a really, really good thought, actually. That's a really good idea for a topic. Let me think. I'm already, like, scouring my DVD shelf. Yeah. Hang on. Let me put my glasses on and have a look here. Okay. Uh, okay, let's see. With Nell and I, Muppet Christmas Carol, uh, The Mighty Boosh Season 2, Brazil, It Happened One Night, uh, Little Miss Sunshine, I'm skipping all the Nostalgia Critic movies, by the way, uh, Little Miss Sunshine, District 9, The Producers, Shaun of the Dead, Eagle vs. Shark, Brief Encounter, United... What, eagle, what you- eagle vs. Shark? Like an actual eagle versus an actual shark? No, it's a really for, sweet New Zealand indie rom-com. Okay, it's never horrible. mind. I w- it, it's for, to, for like a split second, it sounded like a sci-fi movie, like... Yeah, Star- well, like... Star- like Star- versus Mega Octopus. <laughs> yeah, it, it could be something from the sci-fi channel, couldn't it? There's yeah. a new There's a new movie from that channel. It's, like, meant to be the next Sharknado, and I can't fucking remember what it's called, but it had such a funny name. If either of you can remember... I'll look it up. It's a it. new one? Yeah. There's a new... a new one? It's not, yeah, shark, it's not shark Sharknado, though. Of... Have you ever seen a ghost shark? Ghost no. shark is really bad. I love it. I haven't <laughs> either, but I would probably love it, because I love a lot of the movies. Veronica. Yeah, I think... <laughs> shark... Easy. Sharktopus versus Terracuda. I love all the Sharktopus movies. Sci-fi, sci-fi channel movies. I want movies from the sci-fi channel. Sci-fi it's spelled, channel it's spelled S Y I. If that helps. S Y F I. S Y F Y. Sorry. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. S Y F I. Like Placid Sorry. versus Anaconda. I didn't know they made that. And Sharknado Three. Oh hell no. Oh yeah. I still haven't seen that one, and I'm really excited about it. Shark and the Three, oh hell no. That's such a fucking great title. Um, current movies, Sci-Fi UK. Oh no, that's not good. Fuck off. Um, oh my God. Sci-Fi channel, what? I had to exit out of Sci-Fi channel. Sorry, I totally hijacked this whole thread. Um, what was it? Great idea. Is it? Hold movie. on, is this it? Let me, let me actually see if this is a new... Oh no, no, it's it's old. But it it, it said new. It said so new sci-fi way. movie Lava Lantula will destroy LA with hot spiders. Lava. <laughs> Where it's literally these giant spiders that shoot lava out of their butt. That might be it, you know. I feel like it was something like that. Maybe it wasn't. But it, though, Steve Gutenberg's in it. What? Wow. <laughs> That's where he's been. <laughs> I need to watch this. It said it's it premiered good. summer. Let me look this up. We do need to watch this. This officially got awesome. Lava Lantula. Did this movie come out? It it came out on July twenty fifth, but then like three days after that, they green lighted a sequel. <laughs> Oh, only the sci-fi channel. Um, okay. Bad movie, good idea. Come on, come on. Uh, bad movie, good idea. I'm sure, I'm sure there's something that I'm not thinking of. Um, okay, I'm gonna look this up. Bad movie, good idea. I have one, kind of. What? Oh, go on. There's a remake of Rosemary's Baby, which that's... Remakes usually aren't good ideas, but the good idea was they moved it to a different city, Paris, and I was like, oh, that's pretty cool. But the movie itself is incredibly boring because it's a mini. it was a miniseries, and so they stretched it to four hours. Mm-hmm. And I didn't realize it was a miniseries when we started watching it, and so we were there for four hours watching it. I was so bored. You know oh, what? God. You know what could have been good? I just thought of it. You know what should have been at least, like, you know, okay? Yeah. Uh, that Dungeons and Dragons movie from I think it was the eighties. Like, oh, fucking wow. make a good Dungeons and Dragons movie. Fuck. Like, the that only was the best you can do. The only one I know is the one with Jeremy Irons, which is from yeah, that's, the, uh, that's it. That's it. That's not from the eighties. That's from like the early two thousands. Is it? I don't remember. Yeah. I don't remember when that movie came out. It was really it, bad. It, so I'm like. It's a shit movie. I saw it at the cinema. Like, that's how come I know it's not from the 80s, but it's a fucking terrible movie. You're right. 
this I'm, I'm on this thread on a dvdtalk.com and like the number one answer for most of these is uh the 1998 Godzilla should have been oh, really? awesome you know yeah I um 1998 Godzilla I haven't seen that but I didn't even think that the one from like this year was all that to be honest I didn't see the one from this year I heard you know mixed things I want to watch it kind of it like it had some really good stuff in it, but the characters were so fucking boring. Mm. Like the Godzilla itself was kind of rad, but the characters were fucking dull as shit. I'm on this thread. Um, most, good idea. I feel me. like most video game movies, yeah, like, that should, really... should at least be okay. You know, a, like, lot them, a lot of them have a lot of them have good stories. How has this thing. happened? When how how is this still happening? Where they can't make a good video game movie? How is this happening? I think Assassin's Creed, the Assassin's Creed movie, will probably be okay. Like, I think that do, one will at least be all right. But uh, I you're, I do think you're right though. Like fucking 2015, and we can't make a good video game movie. Pixel, I think that's a, fucking. That was bad. It wasn't even a bad video game. It's fucking terrible. I didn't see it, but it's it, let let's be real here. Yeah, I don't see how there's any way that movie could be good based it's on what I've heard. You know. Um I one that keeps coming up on this thread that I'm on, um, like killermovies.com, I just put good movies, um or good idea, bad movie into Google. But one that keeps coming up is twenty eight days later. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it either, but I've heard really good things about that movie, so I'm surprised anyone would say it was bad, but it keeps coming up. Have you seen it, Caitlin? I have not. I haven't really seen any zombie movies. It is a zombie movie, right? Yeah, it is, I think. Cowboys yeah, and Aliens should have been awesome. I yeah, really liked I just that thought movie, about actually. It. I saw Cowboys and Aliens when it was in the theater, because I'm like, that sounds fucking rad! <laughs> Yeah, like, you would think with that concept you couldn't go wrong, but apparently so, they did. It was so boring. It was one of the most boring movies I've ever watched in my life. I kind of liked that movie just because I think the problem with the movie was that it you thought it wasn't going to just be like a Western, but it really was just a Western with aliens in it. And I didn't mind that because I like Westerns enough, but it was like a misleading title to me. Mm. Oh, hey, you know, another one a bit like that, which should have been fucking rad, but just wasn't. Wild Wild West. Like, oh, everything, <laughs> everything about that trailer kicked so much ass. Like, th yeah, like the music, the villain, the actors, and it was just a boring piece of shit. Uh-huh. So that I was like definitely... Reddit, Reddit says, Avatar, beautiful imagery and CGI, sweet premise... Wrote the script on a cocktail napkin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I don't even think the premise is that sweet. I mean, it really is just like Dances with, wol with Wolves, Fern Gully. Like, there's nothing original about it. Yeah. I don't even think it's that good of an idea, but it does look amazing. I'll give it that. It's um, a beautiful movie. <laughs> oh, the Pirates of the Caribbean sequel. Like, the first movie, I fucking, I loved it. I saw it twice in one day. Um... I was so excited about the sequel, and yeah, I really don't think it delivered. Ooh. I, love, I, I love all the Pirates of the Caribbean movies. Like, really, unashamedly, really love all of them. So Great. I even so like the third stuff. one, which isn't the best one. It's definitely the worst out of the four of them, uh, but I still there, like it. There are, there, there are parts of the third one that I'm like, oh, just make it end. <laughs> but I still Great. really okay. love it. Aren't there, like, six Pirates movies now? No, there's only four. The fifth one's coming out. It's gonna be great. Oh, dude. Why do I feel I... like there are, like, six? I don't know. <laughs> I wish there didn't. were. <laughs> it fucking feels like it never ends. I'm sure there are five. I'm sure there are already five, but there I'm willing to believe. There are There are four of them, and they're making the fifth one. Okay, I think you My... probably know more the than I do. The fifth one's feet. coming out. When is, is it next year or 2017? I don't remember. I think oh, next okay. Next year, but I'm not like sure because I haven't, you know, been paying attention as much. Dead and tell no tales coming out 2017. Okay. Dead and tell no tales. I have another one. Um, 
the floodgates are fully open now. Um, Hot Fuzz. No, not Hot Fuzz. I love Hot Fuzz. Sorry, the third one in that trilogy. Um, At World's oh, End? Yeah, the, the World's End, yeah. I thought The World's End kind of sucked, and I was really you sad about that. You love those movies. <laughs> You know what? The first two I love, and that's why I was so excited. And then I thought the sec- the third one, just like, yeah, it didn't deliver on the idea at all. I just thought it was a mess. And can it was really say, bad. Like, can I just say the well, Blair Witch Project is a great premise, but I didn't think it was that scary. I thought it was scary. I know a lot of people have mixed feelings about and it. Cause I, not a lot happened, I get scared I really, like really easily. And like found footage movies scare me. Uh, but Blair Witch Project is definitely not the scariest one I've seen. No, I mean, maybe not anymore, but Par- I do paranormal, like it. Paranormal Activity is the scariest, uh, to be like, to be perfectly honest with you, Paranormal Activity, the first one, is the scariest found footage movie I've ever watched. I think, I think the scariest found footage movie I've ever seen, and maybe it's because I saw it at the cinema, because uh, the thing is with Paranormal Activity is that I saw it at the cinema, but like, there were people talking, and it was really uh, crap. Like, it was just a bunch of teenagers that had gone to talk on their fucking mobiles and eat popcorn. Yeah. Like, like um, I, I, like, I, I feel like I'm in the minority by thinking that Paranormal Activity is scarier than Blair Witch. You know what, though, I do, I do there's, like there's it. There's a lot I of Blair like... Witch that's just like nothing. You know. Yeah. I think that's what I liked about it, though, is the te- I thought the acting was good enough, and it was relatively original at the time. Yeah, so... it's, a, it's a good premise. I just think it could have been done better. Yeah, um, no, especially, maybe. Especially, like, there's just a lot of, to, like, a lot of nothing happens in Paranormal Activity, but it's a lot of, like, really quiet, suspenseful moments where, like, what I like about that movie is, like, you know those scenes where it's, like, a two-minute-long shot of them just sleeping? And yeah, yeah. You're, you hear, like, little, like, just in the background. Yeah, And yeah. it's like, whoa! And it makes you, like, kind of freak out a little bit. And then there's <laughs> there's points in that in that scene where, like, maybe... Well, this is to me anywhere where you think you hear something, but you're not sure whether that was the movie or whether that was, like, someone next to you or whatever. And I don't know. I just, I just I, feel like that movie is scarier than Blair Witch to me. I I agree. Like I think it's very very creative that thing of like you say like having people sleeping and hearing things because it's like that's what happens in real life. Like y- you know all- houses make noise. You know you will be asleep in bed at night and you will hear something and you know even though you know it's of no consequence it will still scare you. I, so I think to tap into that is really good and to have like. Yeah, to be able to to commit to just having people in bed for two minutes and that be the scene, I think that's I think that is pretty creative. Yeah, I kind but of like, thought the they scariest, got the scariest parts of Blair Witch are like the last fifteen minutes. See, I don't know. I th- I think Blair Witch utilized what Paranormal Activity utilized. Like, oh, yeah. I yeah. I found that that tension existed in those moments in Blair Witch where nothing happened, just as much as it did in Paranormal Activity. I just kind of feel like with all the found footage movies, that got less and less original the more they made of them. Yeah. Well, I know I know Blair Witch was the first one to do it, and I appreciate it for that. But I I think. Over, on overall scariness on which one was scary most of the time paranormal activity made me more tense and more scared more than Blair Witch did the only times I were scared again scared in Blair Witch were like the last 15 to 20 minutes you know my favorite found footage movie and the one that scared me the most because I was in the cinema totally on my own um I wasn't expecting to be scared by this movie um, but you could hear a pin drop, um, and that was Sinister, and I did not expect to be scared by Sinister. Cause uh, I just, yeah, was Sinister the, the movie with the trailer, with, like, it, it wasn't it about, like, an exorcism or something, or, or was, no, is not that really. a different movie I'm thinking of? I think that's a different movie. Sinister was just really, like, I loved the way it was directed, first of all. I thought it was really, like, quite kind of elegant, um, and there were really, like, there were some really, like, beautiful shots in it. And I liked the performances a lot. I liked the acting. And it it did really scare me, Sinister. Um, and I, I didn't expect it to at all. Um, and I don't think it's, like, that original of an idea. Like I'm looking at the poster, and I I think I remember the poster. I don't remember, like, what the trailer was or anything. But I th- I'm I like, I've seen that poster before. I, I think... 
it probably helps a lot of these things it probably helps the context and i think the fact that i was in that cinema on my own made a big difference mm-hmm. i definitely do my favorite found footage movie is cloverfield even though i know it's like kind of bad but i really like cloverfield i don't know i thought cloverfield i don't know that would be a movie for me that didn't live up to its um concept my my that's like one of my biggest fears though is like well that's a movie that played on my fears it's like a huge natural disaster like a huge just like fucking nuclear war-esque breakout like that's one of my biggest fears of all time (laughs) probably because you live in america yeah (laughs) like like you know what i mean like like the start of like nuclear fallout or like a like a natural disaster kind of situation you know what i mean yeah i do know what you mean People, like, the way- like panicking you're running down the street and everything is on fire blowing up and shit like that's like like and like people looting stores like that kind of feel like i i don't like that's like one of my like i don't want that to happen to me ever <laughs> no i i get that because that's like it it's chaos it's all the chaos. kind of system yeah but, like yeah it, it's like the chaos system that erupts when like, something like, terrible like that happens yeah it's like post-apocalyptic it's the system falling apart it's there being no like no i don't want to say order like we're all like cogs in a machine or whatever but like you need to be able to like have a certain amount of like stability and the idea of that like falling away and there being no law or whatever like i get why that's scary that's why i don't want to go to prison ever (laughs) Uh, (laughs) that fucking scares me but nothing scares me more than being trapped in a lift yeah which is why like like, Devil could have been good. It could have scared you, but... Yeah, it could have fucked them, but it didn't. It fucking didn't. I still don't want to go in them, though. I still fucking hate them. Horrible do you, things. Do you really yeah. hate elevators that much? I, I, I hate them. I hate, really? Just the, I, the idea of being in, like, a metal windowless box that could get stuck. Or, or that, fall, or... Yeah, or, but, I mean... Yeah, it could fall, it could get stuck. I guess stuck. I, I don't think about elevators. That, like, I, I I use an elevator on a daily basis almost at work, so. Like, I just, yeah, I, I find them really, really, because if it did, if one did stop, if I got home to, like, my, like, I don't know, my building or whatever at 3 a.m. and I used the lift to get up to my flat and it got stuck, I'd be fucked. I mean, I think you'd be okay, but... but, <laughs> but I'd be fucked until, like, morning. I'd have to stay in that little box until morning, until somebody could answer the intercom or whatever. And, like, that that just scares the crap out of me. I mean, like, I read this cracked article about, um... I think it was people getting into situations where they were trapped for, like, months and months, and one of them was about someone getting stuck in a lift. And, yeah, mm. it really... <laughs> That sounds terrifying. I understand the fear, yeah. I just don't have it. Yeah, no, that, well, that makes sense. I mean, it's like there are loads of things that you probably should be scared of, but you're not. Like, I, I'm not I scared. I get why people hate spiders. I'll just fucking crush them, though. Yeah, I'm not scared of spiders at all, and I'm not scared of flying, even though I probably should be, but I'm not. Yeah, I've never flown, so I can't really. I don't have the. I don't have the fear. I guess. You know what? I love flying. But but uh, again, I've never been in a natural disaster. Uh, situation and i'm still scared of those so i i Ooh, think yeah. it's just totally objective it's just about who you are they're not rational these feelings they don't come from anything apart from the inside uh-huh what about you caitlin what's your big phobia i don't like extreme darkness like i don't like being in the dark too long i don't like clowns well what's the difference between darkness and extreme darkness like, it, like you literally can't see anything in front of your face like, out of darkness. It's like, obviously, like, if I'm sleeping, I can turn the light off. Like, okay, yeah. no big deal. I'm not, I don't need, like, a nightlight or anything. But, like, if I'm at a place and it's just incredibly dark and there's, like, no one else around, yeah. I get, like, very anxious because I'm like, there's no one around right now. Something can grab me. Something probably isn't going to grab me because the odds of that happening are very low. But it's really dark. I can't see anything. Yeah. Like, if I go outside in the dark to, like, throw away garbage or something, I get, like, really nervous. <laughs> Even though it's, like, not very rational. I know nothing's going to happen, but that's, like, my fears are, yeah. like, what, like if I can't see what's in front of me. I do understand that. I, I kind of have something, it's not exactly the same, but when I walk home alone at night, 
I'm in constant fear of someone jumping me, like, to the point where, like, I'll put my arms up like I know karate or some shit. Like, <laughs> or, like, if I've just bought, like, a beer or something, I'll, like, if it's really, really, like, no one around and it's really dark, I'll fucking, like, hold the beer up. <laughs> just so I can take a swing at someone if I need to. Here, uh, I'm gonna send you a picture of someone. And I want you to guess who that person is. You'll you gonna never guess in a million years. Are you sending us a picture of their butt? No. Is that why that we went there? What? No. It's no. It's who the fuck that? I want you to guess who that handsome young man is. It is. is that, it is. It is, it is. It is someone who is famous. Oh, okay. Right. Um, okay. <laughs> it is someone that people know. I was afraid it was it like someone? your uncle or something, and I'm like, I don't know how I can guess that. Yeah. Yeah, I thought it was going to be your dad or something like that. Oh, no. um, uh, okay, it's quite an old picture. Um, oh, okay, is it a politician? Yes. Is it a politician that we like or that we don't like? Uh, I like him. You you probably is do it, too. Is it Uncle Joe Biden? Yeah, it is, actually. What? <laughs> oh, he's so cute. He's yeah. so cute. I, I thought it, it might now. be now. Yeah, I do too. Here's yeah, another, here's another hot uh, picture of a politician. You, you try to guess who they are. I found out. Is this a politician that we like or that we don't like? Uh, people didn't used to like him, but I think people kind of like him now. You know, I have no idea who that is. That doesn't look like anyone I recognize. Uh, okay. Shot in the dark. Uh. Uh, like Gerald Ford or someone? I know. No, no, they're they're still alive. Um. Uh, John McCain. That is John McCain. Wow, that was a total. Ga- yeah, you know what? Like John McCain for a Republican, he's kind of a like I don't agree with a lot of what he says, but he's a very like diplomatic. Yeah, he he ran Republican. I don't think he's actually Republican though. Like that's like my mom's theory. Like she doesn't actually think he's as Republican as. He would make people seem, but... Well, you know what? I respect One thing the fuck really, out of him, though. I, I respect him, too. One thing that kind of really endeared me to him was there was a clip of him. It was, like, two clips. There was one of him and one of Donald Trump. And they were both doing press conferences, like, totally separate events. But at both events, somebody in the audience accused Obama of being a Muslim. And Donald Trump was just, like, laughing along yeah. like he was at a bar with his buddies. And John McCain was like, I just want to, you know, shut this idea right now. You know, I might not agree with Obama's views, but he's a good man. He's a family man. He's a decent man. So I'm just going to shut that down right now. Also, and, also... You know, uh... I, I, He's a he's a war veteran. Yeah, yeah he is. Yeah, and he, he's I mean, through it's like a he lot on, of shit. John McCain. And he went on Ellen and was like, "Look, I don't agree with gay marriage." And it's like, as much as I think that viewpoint sucks and is completely wrong, like at least he he didn't make fun of her. He, you know, he wasn't petty about it. You know, he went and he had this conversation and he was very frank and. You know, he didn't seem like he was being a petty little bitch about it. He was just saying, you know, look, this is my opinion, yeah. and he didn't, you know. I mean, like Donald didn't Trump was the one. Who, Donald Trump was the one who had the fucking gall to say that he wasn't a war hero. Yeah, fuck and that. John, John McCain, McCain was a absolutely hero. a war like, hero. Like, if you, if, yeah, John if, you McCain, if you don't know, like, go on. It, like, I guess his Wikipedia page will have the story about it and how he was a prisoner of war for months and uh yeah. it, it, like it's it's terrible it's awful well no he was in i think he was in solitary confinement for like two years or something like it was yeah it's it was um, fucking awful yeah it's horrible i mean he's you know i i don't i'm sure he's not a saint or anything and there are things that he says that i don't agree with but i don't think he's a bad guy i think he's a good yeah. guy basically i think basically a good yeah bloke. i mean like i said earlier i think there's a lot of things he says to get in with certain just with certain politicians and certain parties and stuff that i don't really think he actually believes because of because of stuff, it, because of stuff he's like say. said in the past and stuff like that but, you know. 
I don't think, well, yeah, I mean, I don't think people should say things that they don't mean if they're politicians, well, that, um, especially... Welcome, welcome things... to American politics. <laughs> oh, no, I mean, great. Welcome to fucking British politics. What? But I Can still I ask you a think... question that I don't quite understand what what it was about? Uh, what, Are you going to ask me about David Cameron and the... Yeah, pig? I don't understand what happened. Okay, so, all right, I've got to give you a little bit of history here. Basically, at Oxford University, there is something called the Bullingdon Club, which if you're really, really rich and you went to certain elite private schools, you can become a member of. Um, And it has like these really horrible initiation rituals, like burning 50 pound notes in front of homeless people, like fucking trash and dash at amazing hotels and restaurants, like basically it's just it's it's for the rich and powerful to do whatever the fuck so they I want the bullington guys, club and a lot has an important gift by the way i know it's it's beautiful <laughs> and thank you um so yeah and a lot of these people a lot of these ex bullington club members become politicians which is a fucking scary thought um one of the initiation rituals allegedly um was putting your dick a dead pig's mouth and that's allegedly what david cameron uh-huh. did when he was in the bullington club and that's it. Yeah. Okay. All right. But Hemsley's yeah. Hot. I just say so yeah, that's okay. That's pretty good. From that deleted scene from Age of Ultron, which should have been in the movie. Why? <laughs> to be honest. Yeah. Why was that deleted? I'm curious as to why that uh, was deleted. Because for some reason they don't show these movies to uh. Well, I can. I know the reason. They they don't show these movies to like people who are nerds and care about the plot. Like when they're test. When they're when they have test audiences, and you know, like for movies, where they'll show it to a test audience first, and then that's how they decide yeah, what to yeah. cut. You know, if like they'll ask them like which scenes they liked and which scenes they didn't. Apparently, that didn't test well with the test audiences for some reason because they don't they don't but they, why they would... show these to fucking idiots. I guess I don't know. Fuck. But, I mean, I would have thought that anyone, nerd or otherwise, would want to see Chris Hemsworth getting out of a lake with his uh-huh. muscles. I would have thought anyone would yeah, want to I see know, right? that. Like, you know, like, young and old, man, woman. Child. Yeah. Yeah. I, I can't see a reason why that wouldn't be something everyone would want to see. Like, fucking animals, lamps, mirrors, tables, people. It's all good. If Chris Hemsey's getting out of a lake with his muscles out, it's all good. So New York Comic Con's happening. <laughs> New York Comic Con, which I, I get exhausted by Comic Con sometimes. Why is that? Uh, because Chris? there's so much and I can't keep up. <laughs> there's so much and I can't go. Like yeah. my in my perfect in my perfect world, if I had all the money in the world, I would go to Comic Con every mm-hmm. year. And I would only go to two panels because I would know that I could go back every year. And it would mean that I wouldn't have to rush around. I wouldn't have to queue up. I could take my time. I'd go every year. So, like, for for instance, one year, I might go to, like, Supernatural and Community. The next year, I might go to Adventure Time and My Little Pony. The year after that, I might go to Doctor Who and well, also, Marvel. Well, also, they have the panels Marvel that are, like, universe. one-offs, depending on, like, what's popular. So, like, this year, they have the X-Files panel. They showed the new episode mm. to the audience. Shit, yeah. son, I didn't know that. Fuck. Fuck. What's the uh, general consensus? I was, well, I was browsing the x subreddit from people who were there and watched it, and they were like, yeah, it was cool. <laughs> and and they did do an interview with Rudy Cummy at heard. New York Comic Con, and they said, he said that they'll do more if there's an appetite for more, like after they air the miniseries and people really like it. Oh, there will be. There will be. There'll be an appetite for more. There'll be an appetite for a lot more. Yeah, hopefully. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like, t- disclaimer, I haven't seen season nine yet because I watched the first episode. This is the season where, like, Mulder's gone and you have Doggett, who I really like, and fucking Reyes, who I hate. Yeah. Um, and so far, season nine is a piece of shit, and I know I'm going to have to watch it eventually, but I am really not looking forward to it. I'm very tempted to just skip it, but all my friends that are into the X-Files are like, no, you can't. Yeah, there's, um, so I'm reading a, uh, on the, on our X-Files, so I just watched episode one of season 10 of New York Comic Con, ask me anything, and, uh, 
Someone asked, did they get the tone right, music and atmosphere? He said, mostly, it's obviously very modern smartphones. Mulder uses Uber at some point, and everyone is way older and not in suits or badges. So it feels kind of alien, no pun intended, but Mark Snow's music and the original credit sequence brings it all home. Oh. <laughs> Apparently it's like the, oh. like the greeny, you know, in the, the, uh, the, um, the, the, the opening credit sequence where it's like the greeny footage of the UFO and <laughs> the storm clouds. Oh, and like the guy, like the guy falling into the giant yeah. hand and all that. That's amazing. Like the kind that you can make on like Photoshop or I don't know, like you could do on your Mac. You could do on your Mac from like 2005. Yeah, really. That's amazing. That makes me really happy. He said, I, um, uh, he said, if you're a true x fan, like, if it's in your blood like me, it's a solid 9 out of 10. Rationally thinking, especially when you put it next to the likes of Breaking Bad or Mad Men, it's like a 5 out of 10. <laughs> but to be fair, oh. that's like the original X-Files, too. Like, it's so campy sometimes, and like, I, I, I lovingly refer to X-Files as dumb alien bullshit. Because that's what it is. <laughs> See, I don't know. I'm I'm kind of half with you. I think it can be dumb alien bullshit. I think sometimes it can be, like... Sometimes it can be up there with, like, the best shows of, like, the kind of mid to late 2000s. Sometimes it can be dumb alien bullshit. Uh-huh. I think it really... I think every season of The X-Files has two or three episodes that are, like classics like legitimately good television and then the rest of them are kind of okay uh-huh. and then the rest is dumb alien bullshit um and someone asked general plot outline if in case you want to know the plot outline of the first episode um as long as there are no major spoilers it's not yeah. A, there, yeah there's not really any spoilers episode starts in night roswell 1947 basically shows the entire thing flash forward to modern day a conservative Glenn Beck Tea Party type TV guy, which Joel I McHale, which is Joel McHale, Joel McHale. <laughs> pulls, pulls Mulder out of retirement to present his theory about what aliens are and what the government and global elites are ultimately trying to achieve. He is protecting a multiple alien abductee who may or may not have alien DNA, and she's apparently the key to everything. Wow. Also, they've split up Mulder and Scully. Yeah. And that's I have. And, uh, so, like, Mulder, according to IGN, which also has a, a review of it, uh, like, Mulder lives out in, like, a, like, a, like, a cabin out in the fucking woods, where he spends all his time, like, surfing the web and still trying to find the truth, and Scully has, like, moved on, and she's, like, a full-time surgeon now. Oh, really? Oh, so she's not in the FBI at all anymore? No. Oh, okay. Uh, Skinner right. is still in the FBI. Yeah, he's Skinner. I love Skinner. Always have time to skin. Skinner is another one that I would hear and now in 2015 I would sleep with in a heartbeat. Gru? Huh? You there? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was. <laughs> <laughs> you just processing that information. <laughs> IGN says there are some clunky and weird dialogue moments where they literally yell the slogans from the show at each other. The truth is out there, Scully, and the such. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's great. That makes me so happy. That's what I, I want it to be fucking silly. I want it to be silly as fuck. Yeah. I don't even care. Ah, oh, X Files. It says the interesting thing about Mikhail's character and this episode in general is how it roots things into the real world to some degree. 9 11 is invoked a couple times. Obama and George W. Bush are seen in news footage, and the Outlander series of Tad O'Malley, which is the character, hurls are seemingly eaten up by his audience, no matter how little bearing the theories actually have on real people. Yeah, that all sounds. Uh, yeah, that all sounds kind of inevitable. I mean, I don't think you could really do an updated X Files without kind of, yeah, without it being like topical and relevant. I mean, I, you know, yeah, I, yeah. that doesn't surprise me at yeah, all. Yeah, so he, yeah, so Joel McHale's character is supposed to be like a Bill O'Reilly online news anchor kind of guy who, oh, IGN cool. says, who has even crazier conspiracy theories than Mulder, if that's possible. But unlike Mulder, his fear mongering has made him rich. So again, like it's fucking really, shit. It's a really, really good idea that I think really having on the nose. <laughs> it is on the nose, but I think having having a character like that, there's just there's a lot of scope for it to be very entertaining. Uh-huh. And I think if you're gonna cast anyone as that sort of character, like you couldn't get anyone more like self tanned and arrogant than Joel McHale. Uh-huh. 
<laughs> yeah. God love him. Um, but I mean, the one that I'm genuinely expecting to be good, like I think X, the X Files will be like the X Files. You know, sometimes it will be great and sometimes it will be fucking god awful. The one that I think will be brilliant, the one that I have genuinely high hopes for, is Twin Peaks. Mm-hmm. That also, I'm I didn't know this one in the new X Files. Uh, Kumail Nanjiani is in it, who's in Silicon Valley. Oh, yeah. I love him. Yeah. He's adorable. He was in Community. Oh, really? Yeah, I'm all community alum. Oh, okay. I wonder if John McHale had any hand in him getting cast. Mm. Probably not, but yeah, know. he's adorable. I like that guy. But also, like, it's all over the place. So, like, David Duchovny wants a new, wants to make another season of the X Files. So he's fully, he's fully invested now in the X Files. <laughs> you know what? People are waiting for the day when David Duchovny's like, I don't want to make any more X Files. <laughs> Gillian Anderson has pretty much said this will be the last time she dons the Scully wig. I, well, I, I would like a series where it's just Mulder, so... <laughs> no, I, lo- I love Scully. It's just Mulder being I, crazy. <laughs> I, lo- I mean, I love them, I love them yeah. both. I, yeah, as I, much as you can't have one without the other, but I, I would still love to see like a Mulder, like an only Mulder movie. I mean, I I do, like, I do love Mulder, like, not least because he's a fucking hottie, or he was a fucking hottie anyway, I don't think he is anymore. Um, but in all seriousness, I think that would work for maybe an episode, and then it would be just shitty Mulder. again. <laughs> yeah, just Mulder, I don't see it. But, like, I think the thing is, Gillian Anderson... <coughs> Sorry. Gillian Anderson, like has a pretty good career and i mean so does david Duchovny. to be fair but Gillian anderson does a lot more like interesting stuff like she doesn't just do like american well, drama in, like, she does like stuff, right? yeah she is but she does like theater yeah, right. and things like that as well like she's kind of i well, don't david know Duchovny is like m- making albums and doing folk music and shit you know yeah which is pretty cool <laughs> my, my mom is like my mom is like poor thing can't sing but he can write a song <laughs> He can't write an episode, though. Both the episodes that him and Gillian Anderson wrote were fucking shit. <laughs> Can I actually they were just terrible. say, in relation to New York Comic Con, apparently Mark Ruffalo went around and walked the floor of New York Comic Con and no one recognized him because he had, like, a dumb Halloween mask on. <laughs> I love it when celebrities yeah. do that. Because I imagine me going to one of those things and, like, just... I could finally meet, like, someone I love, and then I would not even know. Oh. Oh, that makes me so sad. It's true, though. Hello. Um, I'm probably gonna go soon, if that's okay. Yeah, we've been recording for a while. Yeah, I think can we, we can probably wrap up, can't we? Yeah. God damn. I'm so <laughs> I only got $10 well, we... of my bank account. Oh, I've been there, buddy. Yeah, me too. What can we finish with? Hmm. Uh, let's see. I don't know Mark Ruffalo had Periscope. I'm absolutely going to subscribe to him on Periscope. (laughs) Mark Ruffalo is so fucking cute. He's so cute. Mark Ruffalo is fucking adorable. Mark (laughs) Ruffalo, he's my dream man. I have Periscope, but I don't use it. I kind of want to. What is Periscope? I don't know what it is. It's an app. Where you can live stream to an audience from your phone. Oh. So, like, Mark Ruffalo uh, was periscoping a little yesterday, I guess, from New York Comic Con. But you can literally, like, live stream from your phone and, like, people can talk to you and heart you and stuff. And uh, really the only people worth following are, are celebrities and people who are famous and have or have an audience, you know. Oh, I have something to end with. Today's happy... Today's happy. Today is National Coming Out Day, so happy National Coming Out Day to everyone that wants to or needs to or has done in the past. Good luck to you. Yay. 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 Okay, I follow Mark Ruffalo on Periscope. <laughs> <laughs> Yay. Uh, I'm trying to find, like, something to end with. Uh, let me open. Let me open this up. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Uh, hold on. Hold on. Uh.
Spooky, scary skeletons. Okay, bye. <laughs> bye. Spooky, scary. I don't even know the words. Scary, I started dancing. Spooky. You guys can't see it, though. <laughs>